here's one more trick. If you find yourself that the video is cut off when, like, when you need it the most, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you can add after each hook, and you can just say wait for like I don't know five seconds, and you put it in your support file. Mm -hmm. And what this does, your after each hooks they run even if a test fails, right? Like if a browser yeah. crashes, that's fine, right? You're not going to get anything. But if a test fails, the after each still runs, and this wait kind of lets the browser catch up, render, and the video will render the last frames, mm -hmm. including the failure. Okay. All right. So you sort of wrap it inside a condition, right? So if a test no, has failed, no, or you like, do that nevertheless? Forever. Like, who cares, right? Like if a test finished five extra seconds of like video, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not doing anything, right? So the video will be encoded really nicely because it mm -hmm. doesn't have any changes. Mm -hmm. Right, if your application is not like doing animations, so by default, if a, if a test is, has failed, it's not doing anything, so the video will be like this five seconds will be very small. Mm -hmm. But if the video failed, you will have nice video that caught up and shows you the last state of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we use to, to make sure that when we fail, it actually we give a browser a chance to catch up and, and show. But uh, but you mentioned you have like 700 tests and you add, yeah. add five seconds to every test. Okay, Philip, let's, 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 <laughs> let's, let's talk. Let's uh, talk mathematics. Let's talk mathematics. All right. right? Um, <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, so uh, I'm going to open calculator. Oh, okay, right, let's, this, let's do right? that. <laughs> let's do this, right? So let's say five seconds times. You know, let's say a thousand tests, right? Let's be right. generous, right? It's five thousand seconds, right? Mm -hmm. We can round it out up, right? And let's say it's six thousand, right? Which is what? That's hundred minutes, right? Yeah, let's say hundred minutes. Okay. So hundred minutes of video, right? Like, let's say. Let's be generous. Let's say 100 megabytes. OK? All right. So 100 megabytes to upload. I mean, 100 megabytes, like, it's like one minute YouTube video. Yeah, right? all right. But I didn't mean that. I mean, like, the test execution, uh, 100 minutes in, into full test execution. Like, that's, that's not yeah, nothing, but, right? OK. So one extra minute, because I would, if it's like, thousand tests, I would probably split them as at least 10 machines, right? So in reality, right, it's like one minute of extra time. If you were okay. to split it into, wait, if you were ten to machines. split it into 10 machines, then that would be 10 minutes, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, okay, 10 minutes. Okay. No, that doesn't, okay. So in that case, we need something more. Mm-hmm. I already lost what I was trying to say. Sorry. <laughs> here's my point. Here, here's my point. Here. I, I, I never sit and wait, right, for all tests to run, right? Mm -hmm. If I need to run all the tests, they run nightly, they run as a cron job, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, I never sit around like, okay, I need to be as fast as possible to run all the tests because then I lost, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm working on the feature, I run only, you know, the tests that relate to that feature. And I use tags, change specs, you name it, all sorts of detection strategies, right? Yeah, all right. Well, so, but that's that's interesting. That's that's kind of uh, touches on the topic we discussed before we hit uh, live uh, about yeah. how you actually structure uh, what you do and how, how, does, uh, how does it work at uh, Mercari. Because uh, I would imagine if you want to release a new feature, then you would go to uh, to push the new feature and then all your tests run and you're just sort of waiting for that to pass and so you can release, right? Uh, yeah. So in that case, you are waiting for your tests. Uh, so you don't run all no, no, of the but, tests, but, right? You run only right, a right. subset? Okay. Exactly, yes. So you can run maybe a big subset, but... You can also control the number of machines, right? Mm -hmm. in, on, in our pull request, you, you can specify how many machines to use, mm -hmm. 
if you want to tag and by default we just run wherever we detect change in your spec files right mm -hmm. because you probably but so basically we we never have to run all the tests and we can instead of shaving with five seconds because if there is an error in both tests what you run and you don't receive any meaningful actionable information when it fails why it failed then this is the expensive part this right? is the yeah 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 yeah. this is your time and trying to rerun the test right and i'll tell you something else right so the human time is a lot more expensive than the machines so storage extra ci machine to throw it at it mm -hmm. right doesn't matter at all right yeah i agree humans. with that and i'm really glad you're pointing that out because uh uh talking about uh whether uh, this or that framework is faster and stuff like that. You mentioned that in the in the one of yeah. your webinars as well, right? That's like focusing on uh, on uh, on uh, not the, not the right part, right? Because yeah. exactly as you said, the human time is the most expensive time. Yeah. Uh, one developer is going to cost you much more than uh, whatever uh, service you'll buy, whether that is GitHub Actions or dashboard or coveralls yeah. or or whatever right and uh, uh and yeah like focusing on this time is uh, is important i get your point now like i, I i'm sort of more um comfortable now with the with the after each hook <laughs> yeah although five seconds still feels like a lot uh, uh I, I would probably try how... try a little less uh and see where that brings me 